couch in there? It's a very big couch. Uh, I know, right? It's really nice. Oh, are we doing therapy? Have, do I have to tell you all my problems? Yes, yeah, let's talk about therapy. I love it. Can I? Okay. Yeah, I've been doing whatever you want. Hi. I can see you. How's everybody doing? Good. This is why I do this, guys, because I get moments like this, and I just, my, like I say, my little millennial heart just bursts open right now. Oh, stop it. Tell me more. <laughs> Let's just go to the beginning. Uh, born in Brooklyn. So let's talk about Brooklyn, a little bit. New York, yeah. Your You're origin from, story. Anybody know about Brooklyn? Anybody from New York? Brooklyn, anybody hear about Brooklyn, New York? Italians in the Anybody have been to New York? <laughs> Sweet, thank you. It's good to see an Italian family. Born and raised in New York, moved to Orlando, Florida in 1990. Was in high school there. Loved the theater and the arts. Started actually singing and dancing and did you know, little shows in high school and then. Literally, my senior year, I ran into a bunch of guys, and it kind of trickled off that way into meeting Chris, Chris knowing Justin and JC, and then going on to Lance. And after I graduated high school, I was touring with four of the knuckleheads in Europe. Oh my god! <laughs> in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Yeah. Can it's I even ask you about your dad? Was in a doo wop group? My dad was in a, in a, a not a very popular doo wop group, but he also when he this is so horrible. What are they called? Oh, well, they were called the Orions. Not the Oneeders or the Orions, but it was the Orions. Yeah, correct. But the funny part was, is years later, after when I was on tour with NSYNC, they actually had an audition at a local radio station in Orlando where they were looking for the not-so-boy band, which means it was like 60 and older. So my dad was part of that group. I thought he was gonna have a stroke or a heart attack on the damn stage, I swear to God he was. But he opened up, he had a band, literally a, a vocal group, and he opened up for us in a few shows. Insane, he opened up for Insane. Get out of here! Hysterical. I would make sure there was an oxygen tank on the side. <laughs> I was making sure they had Depends and stuff. Just oh, that's so wrong. Where's my dad? Is my dad in the audience? These are the jokes, people. These are the jokes. No, but it was awesome. It was great. Is my dad in the audience still? Is my dad here? It he depends. Was last one. No, I was just thinking about how funny it would be for my dad to open up for me. It was a But it was fun. It was, it was an how interesting fun. thing. Hilarious. That's so cool. See, so you definitely have roots in that. It's, yeah. it's genetic. I was one of them. He always kind of um, got me involved in singing. I love it. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about some of your other projects you've been doing, but let's just get right down to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about what we all want to talk about right off the top here. I want to start off, though, by uh, saying this to everybody. So we're not going to be those people today, guys, okay? We are not. Lies. We are not gonna ask about a tour, okay? okay? We're not gonna do it. We're not gonna ask about an album. If you're curious, Google's your friend. You can look it up. I'm sure it'll be everywhere if that is something that happen. No, no album. Have no idea about a tour. Next there you question. go. So we covered that. We don't need to ask that anymore. Um, but go. let's talk a little bit about like, okay, so I, uh, I, I sing too, and I like I like vocal. I don't think we talk about vocals a lot, but you're a baritone. So in in sync, so there's obviously there's tenor, baritone, there's a bass. You are baritone, so you're kind of mid range, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. This is the bass, which was Lance. Everybody right. thought it was me or somebody else, but no, it was Lance. Yeah. Chris is actually the oldest, but he sings the highest. The highest. He's, He's a tenor, tenor, but it's yeah. Lance, me, pretty much JC and Jester in that middle, and then Chris is above yeah. as far as vocal arrangements. Yeah. I've heard your singing solo, and I would venture to say that you you could be a tenor. Like, I'm like a tenor. I'm like a second tenor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny because it's like, yeah, my boy, my range is a little bit different. It's not as high and it's not as low. But it does the job is what I what I what I've what I've heard so far. <laughs> well, we we've all we've gotten opportunities to hear you doing some solo stuff. Okay, so let me first ask you, is there a favorite song that you enjoy singing? Oh my gosh, I don't know, right now, it's cool, we would, uh, me and AJ from Backstreet Boys, we went on a tour right now, uh, nice. called The Legendary Night, so we've been singing yeah, each nice. other's songs, which has been a blast, that's been a lot of fun, so, I mean, as far as an in-sync song, back in the day, what I love to sing was, I thought she knew was, was, was the I okay. song. I'm so glad you said that, because <laughs> that's what I was going to segue into, either way, I was going to force it into that, anyway. <laughs> so, I thought, I thought she knew was probably, I mean, if you're like a deep, like, hardcore in-sync fan, it, yeah, it's a personal like, what's favorite. That? It's a, it's, it's, oh my god, it's so good, guys. Like, it's, it's an amazing If you haven't song. heard it, it's a beautiful song. It was one actually one of the first acapella yes. songs we ever learned. Yes. Uh, and a woman by the name of the late Robin Wilde, she passed away due to cancer, but she was the one that actually got us the kind of arranged our vocals, like kind of made the in sync sound. So, like the national anthem that you hear, if we, there's a couple of times we've done it for uh, not Super Bowl, but it was the World Series, and we did it for actually the Olympics in 2000. So, if you hear those, that acapella, it's, that's her arrangement, uh, 
gosh, there's a bunch of songs that we did that Beautiful were great. And, and, and I love it because it really does highlight each of you. So it's one of those songs where, you know, typically, of course, just the JC would be the leads, but on this, it kind of gives everyone a spotlight. And so I was looking up some YouTube clips and I saw a stadium show that you did during the No Strings Attached tour. So it was like probably 2000, 2001. Um, and Your day, you think, 2000s, it's 2000s, yes. Um, and I'm watching this clip and I heard the song before in different, y'all that, you know, like you said, early on, or, you know, but I saw this one clip, huge arena, right? And they start the song and I think Justin starts it and JC and everybody's like, you know, doing the typical, like you're loving it. When you do your part, the arena like explodes, y'all. I mean, way. Yeah, because I was sick half the time. I know. Was chance of but sick, so people like, yeah. lost their minds. You could hear like the difference. Like it was like, hey, Justin, yay. Oh my God! Like Joey oh just God. blew yeah, up. They're excited. Like, holy cow, we actually can sing. No, not lip sync. I'm it. gonna. That's great. <laughs> he can actually sing. I'm gonna read you some comments from the YouTube clip. Okay. Okay, because I was looking at it and I was, this is seriously like all over. You can, you can look this up. Uh, damn, Joey started singing and the cheers were huge and then he was most impressive too. Wow, Joey went to church with that one. <laughs> OMG, Joey Fatone's voice is so much higher than I expected he could get. They Chris could be right on the stage right there. <laughs> Joey owns this song. Joey is so good. Holy OMF, uh, the crowd lit up when Joey sang his part, Don't Sleep on Cuz, two Z's. This is the first time I heard Joey sing, amazing voice. Joey was always my number one fave, can relate. And then, all in caps, okay, can't ex expletive believe this whole time. It was Joey Fatone who sang that verse flawlessly. Oh my God, what amazing men, all of them. So, Good luck. Yeah. I mean, and it just goes on and on for them from there. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, for Joey. I'm like, Thank you, know, you for tuning my horn. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's being in a group, you know, you, you share sure. your time, you know your roles and all that, but just an amazing, uh, every single one of those guys in the group are amazing singers, and, and hearing you get spotlighted is just a treat. Thank you. you know, it, it's, it's just amazing as far as the test is time for music, by the way. I mean, obviously, we really, as a group, haven't done anything until just recently, though, but as far as even the, you know, Bye Bye Bye, Tear Apart, and those old songs, it's amazing how a lot of the parents are now showing their kids the music. And like I said, when I've been going on tour with AJ, it's been an interesting thing to see how many young kids. I had one young girl, I got choked up. I was singing the wrong, speaking of which I, I was, it was like a, uh, a sound check party thing that we do. We have people come in and we play like two, three songs, get our ears done right, you know, dialed in. But we also ask the audience, you know, whatever questions they want. So this young girl, he rose her hand, she goes, oh, can you sing? I thought she knew. And I was like, what? <laughs> so my musical director gets up at the piano, he messes around for a second, and I sang my part. As I'm singing my part, I mean, I'm not kidding, this kid is uh, six, seven maybe? She starts crying. So then I start singing my own other part, and I'm like, I thought she knew my word. That's boring as hell, but I was singing my normal part because I was watching her going, why are you crying, why are you crying? And then I got getting all choked, I'm like, you made me mess up the whole darn thing. I'm like, forget this, man. And then she, yeah, she literally, but she came up on stage, she danced actually on the show, she oh cried again. I mean, it was like, she, you know, her mom, I guess, let her listen to the music, right. but, you know, and she just had a love for, for the group, and it was just very sweet, it was very sweet. Really weird that that generation, I'm like, I mean, wait, well, yeah. it's, you know, I always, I have these moments too where like someone younger than me will reference something that was my time before, and I'm like, how do you know that? But it's like, I grew up listening to my mom's music too, and I'm a huge like Led Zeppelin fan, I'm a huge like classic rock fan. They, you are gonna get new generations no matter what because it's good music. It's music that you know a generation will pass down because they loved it. Um, it's gonna stand the test of time. You're gonna have. You're gonna I have hope so. Gen Z and Alphas running around with I love Joey shirts all over the place. So does that chick? There's people. Up there. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I might see like a penny. It's like five guys you gotta split everything with. So it's like having brothers and sisters. It sucks. <laughs> Uh, again, in your role, not just in singing with the group, but you as a uh, unique character and personality. And, you know, when they when I saw the name of the panel, I mean, I had heard that before, but it was like, it's, they said the fat one. And I was like, well, that seems rude. Like, I don't know why we titled it that way, but I do know that that has been a nickname. But it got Chris Fatone, F A T O N. F A T O N E spells uh, fat one. <laughs> <laughs> or Fatone, or Fatoni, or No Tone, 
But they called you that even when you were like a kid. Yeah, and I was, I was like a skinny like kid. this. Yeah. This is how skinny it was, and I was fat one. Right. But now I just filled in everything. Now, it's I like this. <laughs> now I'm like this. Yes, I'm a donut now. My belly button looks like this. <laughs> so it's always been a nickname of his. It's just kind of carried on uh, through the years. But I think it also kind of speaks to you as a person, you as a personality. You know, I know we uh, always talk about like everyone has a favorite, you know, person in a group. I really feel like through time, as time has gone on, that your personality has kind of, you know, it, as far as like who is your favorite? Who do you want to hang out with? Because I'm normal. Because you're cool. <laughs> Well, you're damn What you see is what you get. Yeah. I don't sugarcoat anything. Like, are you talking, like, right? Like, he's the one you want to hang out with. I don't come out like, hey. <laughs> and I get back saying, like, oh, these people suck. Oh. <laughs> but no, I, I get it. For me, it's like, I love doing things like this. If I, and I always say this to people, and like, even like celebrities sometimes, you know, they come and do these shows, and, you know, the Comic Cons. And, Either you enjoy it or you don't. Either you're, 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 you and love can, it or you don't. You can don't. feel that too. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I've seen know. it. And I enjoy it. I really, I really do. It's, it's one of those things where I get to come to cities I don't normally come to. And I get to see fans and people that, or maybe some people have never even met me before. And I've, I've always seen people come up and come to the table like, who are you? Oh, you were in that, that group, the back, what is that? I need disease? That's cool. Then they keep looking at me, oh, you were a rabbit? What the hell was that? Joker. Oh, I've seen the practical joke. You know, it's that. And they, then it clicks. Oh, the practical joke is, oh, you were funny in that. Cool, I didn't know you were in a group. That's what I get. It's all good, but it's, again, it's, it's, been, it's been fun to be able to do these different things and throw stuff on the wall to see really what sticks. And no one's ever told me specifically, you suck. So, so far I've been doing right in my life because, you no, know, I do everything kind of okay. But it's been, it's been a blast, you know, I'm able to, you know, again, Doing my big fat Greek wedding, you know, doing Broadway. I got a chance to do Broadway. I did Rent and Little Shop of Hearts, and you know, I, I got. That's to... shown. Like I think those those projects you've done, like Sins and Safe, have shown that kind of a window into who you are, or who you well, are as a person, do, yeah. and personality. And I think people have fallen more and more in love with you over the years, even more so than when you were even think. I grew to my cool. face too. My nose was ginormous. Right? And I grew to my, <laughs> my own head, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I love that though. I really do feel that you become a lot of people's favorites. Like, yeah, fan favorite. And at least that's how I feel. I mean, the fans. The fans. So, speaking of the other guys, you know, those other guys, um, I know you guys still keep in contact, obviously. You guys probably have, do you have a text chain? Like, we do. We have a cool. group text. I, don't know, I text all the time and nobody texts me back. So. <laughs> Teasing. <laughs> no, it's fun. I mean, it, again, we just saw each other, except obviously Justin was, was working. He was traveling to Europe, but we got by to the Wolverine and Deadpool premiere. Um, no spoilers. Yes. It was I'm awesome. So and I'm not going to give any spoils, but if you have not seen it yet, it's not for the faint of heart, but it's freaking amazing. I've seen it tonight. I'm so oh, excited. I think, was, I, think I want to go see it tonight again, too. Seriously, just, I'm not kidding you. Opening, I'm biased. It's amazing. Just saying. Uh huh. That's all I gotta say. That's all yeah. I gotta say. I'm gonna no, say I know. Else. I've heard the rumors. I don't. I'm not gonna give any more. Nothing I'm not gonna else. Put anything else out there. I just, I just love the fact that you know the whole. You know, they brought a lot of Marvel people back, which was cool. That's Absolutely. Awesome. It's, it's kind of. It's been kind of coined already. Yeah, it's yeah. like. We're back, guys. Yeah, Marvel so, and, is, is and strong. Was, and ready to go. And reason why we're in it is all due to Blake Lively. No kidding. Really? But it was if it wasn't for Blake, I think we probably wouldn't have outfitted that because she even said she's like this. <laughs> she's a huge fan, but oh no, yeah, she's massive. a huge dancing fan. But she also wanted to get like if you actually go online, there's a, there's a couple of things that she wanted in the film that he put in everything. Like talked about the sorting hat from from Harry Potter. Oh wow! He threw in a line from that. There's a line from something else. You know, she's a huge NSYNC fan, so, you know, Bye Bye Bye's in there, so it's really funny. And she was like, no, no, you have no idea. He wanted to put a lot more 80s music. She said, no, you need Y2K, you need, you need NSYNC. Yes! So it was really sweet that she kind of thought of us, so every time I kept saying, thank you, Blake, don't worry about you. I love it. There's like a picture of her, too, of like, she has a picture of all the guys, and she's like, bursting. It was like, weird. It was funny to we say, we were all fangirling each other. It's like, oh. Yeah. Funny the things that we all kind of fangirl off, and then you fangirl, I'm sure, on others. Oh, yeah, are you kidding me? Yeah, who do you fangirl over? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> I didn't mean, I was pissed off I didn't say hi to Hugh Jackman. I mean, I met him once before, but that night I didn't get a chance to even say hi. I was like, where did you go? I care about you, Ryan. I've seen you, Ryan, before. Man. You're good. No, it was really, really cool. It was, it was, it was a fun premiere, kind of cool to see our song. 
Yeah, it's, a spoil, it's not a spoil, people know that Bobby buys it or whatever. Yeah, but it was just cool. It's, it was, it's, it's one of those things where we got to sit back and just kind of, yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like you, you did celebrate that. I was just excited to get the popcorn bucket. I didn't care about anything else. Yeah. <laughs> but did you see the baby Deadpool one? Oh my gosh, I want that. That one I've seen, I haven't got that one. But I got, they gave the Wolverine and I stole two of those suckers. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> my daughter, I was like, my daughter needs one. She needs one. Well, the dynamic, again, between you and the guys, I love that you guys still have that. Has that changed? Like, you grew up, right? Like, you guys were kids when you first started this. Has dynamics changed? Have personalities changed? Or are you guys still the same old, like, fall into the same old, same old with you Well, boys? I think what's weird about it is when we all get together, it, it, no time has passed. Yeah. You know, we start uh -huh. ragging on each other and saying stupid things, or, hey, remember this, kind of reminiscent. But, you know, what we talked about as far as even just, like, going back and going to the studio, with Trolls 3 and the, the song that we had on, on Justin's album. You know, it was like time never passed in the sense of, all right, let's do these parts, let's record, and we got back down to business. So it wasn't like, it's weird. Like everybody, you know, kind of knew their place and knew what we had to do and we got in there and did it. So it's not like, yeah, it's like no time has passed, really. I love that. Some of us have gotten wiser, I think. Maybe dumber. I've gotten a little dumber. <laughs> but some of us have gotten wiser. And you know, it's like, you know, instead of joking around all the time, we actually have normal conversation. Now, back Adult in the day, it was like, well, yeah, back in the day, it was like, oh, let's go party, we want to go drink. Now I'm like, dude, you see the new air fryer? Holy crap. <laughs> I just bought a freaking uh, refrigerator at Lowe's, the drawer with the sodas and the two different ices. Oh, shit. <laughs> that excites me, though. It does, can, seriously. I can't believe it. Because I know. it's a stupid <laughs> thing, but it's awesome. I, uh, I heard about a story, I think Lance was talking about, something about a burger incident. Do you recall that story? Yeah, I don't get mad very often. Which, by the way, I feel like I'm, I'm still like going back to like the, the whole fat boy nickname and like feeding into that, that then, right now. The Which, by the way, you have aged like fine wine, my friend. Uh, I'm just saying, right? Are you right? Can I call you my friend? Are I don't friend? do, yeah, no Botox, no nothing except these are hair plugs, baby. They're still thin enough. You look great, no. Oh, you yeah, look I'm plugged He's a plug in, I don't care. I'll tell everybody. <laughs> if not, I'm gonna look like a munchie chi, like half bald. But, <laughs> so but, uh, but apparently this had to do with being a bit of, was it like you were hangry? Like, to, what happened? Yeah, I don't, get, I don't get hangry often. And when I do, I just, I'm maybe a two year old. So, well, one time we were doing a lot of press one day, and I think it was for Best Buy, if I'm not mistaken. It was the bobbleheads that we were, we were prom promoting the first time that these bobbleheads were coming out. Meanwhile, why the heck would Best Buy have bobbleheads when they sold DVDs and electronics back in the day before they started selling everything? So, they had these bobbleheads. Before we were doing that, we were doing all this press all day. I'm like, listen, I'm starving. I said, what, what do you want to eat? I said, just order me a cheeseburger, blah, 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 blah. And it's going to be sent to the room that we're getting makeup in because we have another press thing literally in five minutes. Okay. So I go up there, I get makeup on. I'm so excited. I get it. I open up the thing, and the burger's half eaten, and the fries are half eaten. I'm like, that's the worst. One thing you don't do, don't eat with my food. So I looked at I'm, I'm looking around, and all the guys are sitting there, not looking at I'm like, who did it? Who did it? Nobody would confess. And I went, you know what? I'm not going downstairs now. <laughs> They're like, what, no, we need to go down there. I don't give a damn. If there's none of the cheeseburger here, I'm like, oh, we gotta be down there? Oh, too bad, I'm not going, sorry. I had tour manager come up, I had Johnny Wright come upstairs, I had everybody, come. you need to come down there. Finally, I was like, you know what, fine, I go down there. And then I found out who did it, so the bitch, Justin and Chris did it. But the funny part was, to them, and I thought it was kind of funny after the fact, but I was still annoyed. At like 10 a.m. the next morning, I get a knock on my door, and there are 10, 10 cheeseburgers. 10 <laughs> huge plates of just 10 cheese, every all a bunch of cheeseburgers. I was like, sons of bitches. So, like, apparently, they still give a crap about that. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's the fun part. They piss me off, but then the outcome's even funny. So. It's a rewarding outcome, absolutely. So, and, and while you still, I know you still have that dynamic with the guys, you've also built friendships outside of. In sync and into other bands. So obviously you mentioned AJ, who was supposed to be here and had an engagement. He couldn't make it here today. Which, by the way, because he's not here, we have to hear an embarrassing story about him now because he's not here. So I'm we just have telling to you, he cancels stuff. That son of a gun. Screw that guy. <laughs> Man, no, I'm kidding. He, yeah, he, honestly, he had a great opportunity. That's honestly, yeah. he, he canceled this. I'm actually doing the tour with him. We had to cancel a couple dates as well because he's doing this thing. I can't say what it is because it's. Oh. But they're shooting uh, overseas somewhere. So I was like, okay, no big deal. You just canceled seven shows and then you come to the Comic Con. Great, buddy. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Leave me high and dry. But it's all good. 
again, it's one of those things where if opportunity arises, you know, you gotta get Absolutely, there. for sure. Okay. But you and AJ have a great friendship, so you, you do also with a lot of the other guys from Backstreet, from you know, O-Town, I believe. Well, it's weird because, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's interesting because a lot of the guys in boy bands, when you talk to them, we all have one common bond that not many people have, and it's that, just that bond of the five guys touring, this and that, you kind of went through the same things. So we all kind of understand each other in a weird, odd way. And I think with even like, you know, a lot of times I hang out with Eric from O-Town, uh, Trevor as well, good friends with, uh, AJ, I've been hanging out. I mean, we even went just recently, even after the shows, we, I was happened to be in California going to Disneyland with my daughter, and he brought his kids too, so we all went, they went on like rides and stuff, we went on that, you know, just Disneyland running around. So it's fun, I mean, again, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you have that bond and you understand that. So it's kind of fun yeah, to be I mean, able to hang. To totally unique experience. I, I totally get that. It's like you speak the same language, you've had the same type of experience. Okay. Um, kind of want to maybe use that as a segue. Um, real recently, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet on Netflix. I think it released on Wednesday. A Dirty Pop documentary just came out. Kind of Dirty Pop. Dirty Pop. Uh, featuring, um, really kind of featuring on Blue Perlman, uh, which was in sync and many other of the band's uh, manager and kind of. A little bit yeah. of it, it went deep into that. Um, it, it went to if you've never seen Lou Perlman, the the guy who kind of. I mean, again, I always say when people say, you know, what kind of guy was he? And I was like, he's a great businessman for himself because he did his own Ponzi scheme. But he actually, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have been together. Actually, would have never been together. A lot of the different bands, honestly, would have never been together if it wasn't for him, which is crazy. However, he was taking money from other people. He was literally telling them all oh, invest in me and people's savings and he was really screwing them over, which kind of sucked. But documentary is interesting because I was even saying people like, what do you think about the documentary? It's so this and that. I'm like, I lived it. You know, but weird enough is I didn't know after. Like around two, like right when we, when we left him and he had all these other bands that we didn't even know about, like after O Town, didn't know he was hanging out with the one guy that's in the story if you ever see it, that he traveled around with him when he was on the run. <laughs> And I didn't know anything. And the guy didn't know he was on the lam. Like, he, he was like, I was just, we thought we were gonna, I just a business deal. Yeah. yeah. The business thing, it was like, uh, no, he was literally flying around, fleeing How away. crazy is that? So that I didn't understand. But I mean, again, he was just a great yeah. business man for himself. He really was. He just, but again, if it wasn't for him, you know, I don't say I wouldn't be here doing it. I know, it's kind of double sided, you know, because it's, it's true. I mean, you can look at it like, well, like, would you not have done it again? You know what I mean? Knowing exactly. everything you know now. You don't know. Yeah, who knows? Right? It's like one of those things, you know. But it, you know, yes, there was a lot of harm that did come from that. But, um, you know, he was definitely the guy behind a lot of oh, this yeah. stuff, and, and where you are because of that. Yeah, so, great. and it's a little yeah. sad, actually, the way yeah. it kind of ends and all of that. With that, I mean, just in general, I just thought it was kind of a sad situation. Yeah, but, no, hey, but it, but you know, in those sad situations, things came out. Like I said, we wouldn't have been here. So, exactly. Thanks, Lou, for yeah. something. R.I.P. Lou. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into uh, some other areas that uh, you've been in since you think. Of course, uh, you, have some broad... <laughs> you have done some Broadway, which has been really impressive. Uh, Rent, I mean, talk about like the most like known roles and like most iconic, you know, uh, Broadway shows, Rent. And you played the lead in Rent. You played Little, in Little Shop of Horrors. Fake that, yep, fake Rock that. Rock of Ages, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know what? I, my background was, was theater back yeah. in the day. Yeah. So mine was a lot more musical theater. A lot like, so it was nice to go back to that to where, you know, not many artists get a chance to do it or not many artists know how hard, a lot more hard work it really actually is because you're doing eight shows a week. You literally have one day off. You do eight shows a week, two one day, two another. It's, it's insane. But it's a fun grind. It's really something where, you know, I love the instant gratification of telling the story, getting the instant reaction, which yeah. I love. So I mean, again, I, um, we always talk about theater being that, that like touchstone for actors, and you know, you feel like, you know, not necessarily you have to do theater to be respected as an actor, of course, because everybody takes different paths, but a lot of people look at that as like a good foundation to kind of have. I actually got to kind of peek behind the curtain one time, it's a, you know, locally, you know, they have, we have Aurora Arts Theater, we have Harbor Playhouse. They invited me to do the, um, the first song of Rocky Horror, and I'm not a theater person, I sing, but I'm not a theater person. So I got to do uh, a science fiction, science fiction double feature. Double feature. Double feature. Double feature. Good song. So I, and then I got to go backstage and see the chaos that is backstage. And I was just like, I had, I did two shows that, that night. I only did it once, I only did it like the night. And I was exhausted. And I was like, how do you guys do this? 
Eat it chill. day in, day out. It's like, it's mm -hmm. insane. And I only did like the sliver of it. Like, it was really impressive. Massive respect. I can't even imagine on the scale you were doing it at. Like, oh my I, God. I did shows, I did for six months when I did went. That was the longest stint. But I've done other ones for three months. I'm actually going back to Broadway in January. To do it. I'm not saying what show yet, because I can't say what show yet. But we'll, we're all friends you will here. know, you will know, but it's gonna be January, February, March. So I'll be doing, yeah. I think it's like a six to eight week run. Eight nice. week run, yeah, that I'm doing. So we finally said yes to it. They're excited about it, but they haven't told their cast yet because they got big mouths as well, so. We're we waiting to the final, anything. we're waiting for the final announcement. No but but, but it's anything. in New York, we're doing, I'm doing it, so it's 100%, so I can't wait. We're not gonna say anything, right guys? Lies. We never say anything. Sure. And it stays here. I will say it's a Broadway show. It fair is enough. on Broadway. Fair enough, fair enough. If it enough. closes before that, I guess I will be doing it then, but hopefully it will still be open. No, it's a good show. Awesome. Well, that's exciting. Um, and let's talk a little bit about my big fat wedding, y'all. That was so fun. I would have flew that one. Sound what happened there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was exciting. It was one of those things where it was in between, literally when we were recording songs for that second, was doing the album. And we were trying to do a film with Plato Productions, which is Tom Hanks' company, with a gentleman by the name of Gary Getzman, who works with him. And them two were producers and writers and stuff for that, for that production company. And they did that thing you do, Band of Brothers. So they were doing all that stuff. They wanted to do kind of like a help, almost, like a Beatles help. And they literally talked about, they sick about doing that. We were talking about possibly doing like a Grease back in the day, where it was like us as the Greasers, you got Britney, and Pink, and all these other people. We, I mean, we had this whole idea. We couldn't agree upon whatever it was, but they always kept us in line for stuff. So there was a woman that was working in Playtone who was like, oh my gosh, there is a role, it's an independent film, that you'd be perfect for. And I actually just happened to go to the office to say hi to Tom Hanks and a couple of people in the office. And they're like, well, there's an audition for a movie called My Big Fat Great Wedding. It's a very small budget film. It's like film $5 million. I'm like, doesn't, doesn't sound very small, but in the film industry, $5 million is nothing. Uh, but I was like, uh, okay. And they're like, well, we're doing auditions right now. Do you want to read for the part? I was like, Sure. Got the sides, looked at it, went inside the audition, met me, who was the writer, and, and, and uh, you know, became the director later on, but the casting director was there. They both knew who I was, but didn't know I could act. So then when I came in and read it, they were like, all right, cool, I'll let you know. Then I got a phone call going, hey, they want you to do it. I was like, really? <laughs> and that dialect coach to try to do a little more Chicago, since my New York was coming out more than Chicago, whatever, it sounds very similar anyway. But the funny part about it was, is they literally I sat down, Got there the first day, because we were literally in between. I was there for like, not even a week, I think, a week and a half, maybe. And they were cramming all the scenes in, so they're like, sat down, and like, this is your mother, this is your father, that's your aunt, that's your uncle, that's your cousin, 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 that's your cousin. You got it? I went, yep. And it was action, and it was the, literally the first scene I shot was the first scene walking in to the restaurant, the first one. And then it grossed over a ridiculous, it, it actually sat on the shelf for almost two years. And then Nia went to a lot of Greek festivals to promote it. And right around Easter time, for some odd reason, two years later after the film was completely shot and done, it grossed and just raised up the theater, just get bigger and bigger. It grossed over like 280 million in the theater alone. It was like one of the biggest romantic comedies of all the time in the sense. I mean, so, it really was sort of a, like, I want to say sleeper, but it was unexpected, I feel like. It really yeah. was the phenomenon that was. I was like, me too. I don't know. I, was like, I know. And I think some of us, like, I don't know if this is just a me thing, but like, I feel like when I watched it, I related because my cultural background is. Mexican American, Hispanic, they're loud, they're crazy, they have crazy. Like, I found, Everyone I saw, like, yeah. I found, like, I saw myself and I saw some of my family members in a, in a culture that really wasn't mine. It wasn't Greek, but so many parallels. Being in an Italian family growing up, did that help contribute to the role? Oh, yeah. But that's the thing, everybody, every, like you said, everybody has that, that, you know, wacky aunt or uncle. Everyone has that depressed cousin. You know, everybody has, everybody has, everybody has something, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, and that's what I think makes it so much genuine and real in it. And that's how she, her actual story is about her, it's about her family. And even when, spoiler alert, sorry, in the second one, because the first, I never read the script when I, until I got there, we did the table read. And the one who plays my sister said, hey, did you read the script? I'm like, why? It's like, you don't know what happens. It's like, oh, do I die? I'm like, what happens to my character? They're like, no, you're gay. And I was like, what? I was like, is Lance past my boyfriend? Who's the one who am I dating in this film? But it was the weirdest thing. But what happened was, is when she, and she didn't do it for the first film, but she did it for the second film because it wasn't right yet. Uh, marriage and all that stuff wasn't happening. But the crazy thing about it was, is it actually happened to her at a wedding. Her, co her cousin came out to her at her wedding and she didn't know how to handle it and that kind of stuff. But 
you know, in, the, in that time when the second one came out. And then again, third one was awesome. Went to Greece for about two months. I was like, anytime you want to write me in a story where I'm in another country, especially Greece, I am down. You tell me, because I did nothing. I hung out for about two months. It was fantastic. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Impractical Jokers. Can you hear that? Those knuckleheads. So, I almost like thought about this, uh, Chuck Norris is here, right, at the Comic Con, and we were supposed to do a panel, he's not doing a panel after all, but I don't know, but I was really seriously going to call him Choke Norris at one point, just because I thought that would be funny, I thought, no, probably not, you'll probably hate me, I wouldn't know. Choke Norris. Choke Norris is going to be here. If no one's ever seen what a practical joke is, or is these knuckleheads that do, uh, unspeakable things to each other to embarrass themselves, and I've been friends with them now for quite some time, and I've done a couple of shows where just recently, uh, I got punished where they would normally have, they get punished and they punished me as a celebrity which they've never done before and I had to do some interesting things. I got a tattoo, I had to pee my pants in front of 50 people. So people thought I was having a stroke or a heart attack. They didn't have, <laughs> had no idea what was going on. Uh, what else? I got a tattoo. Uh, I had to get Novocaine. I got Novocaine in my mouth. Two, four, six, eight shots. And then I had to sing a song and have a conversation which was like not Easy. So I was like, hey, it's so pretty. Look at my blood, blood, blood. Maybe shades of Jim Carrey. I'm like, mm, like, what he does. So like, bad. Really I tried to talk, and it just it was, was not. It was not inside of my mouth. <laughs> and it now was, you're hosting. It was awful. Impractical jokers after the party. Well, we did that for a while. Yeah, we did that after party for a while. It just got. It, that one was hard because it was interesting how they were doing. I mean, they they made a show for me. Literally made some, made up a show, which was great. But what happened was, is they were shooting the episodes, and when they shoot the episodes, they put, they don't put the exact skits in the, in the episode as it's shot in, they'll move them around sometimes. And the thing is, is it was hard to do those shows because you'd have to talk about that episode. Meanwhile, they were still editing those shows while we were shooting the show, that, the after party show. So it was very difficult to do for them, time-wise, so they can't do it. Well, so, well do you have any, entire, uh, any experience on Impractical Jokers that Maybe they couldn't air or didn't air for some reason. Well, no, I did. I did a bunch of stuff on the on the the, the one that I got punished, but the one of the punishments that they didn't show was just awful. And, and basically, all those punishments they've done to them already. So it was like a gauntlet of ones. So it was like all these different things. So we were at a, basically it was called Joey Fatone's dance party, and they hired fifty dancers that had no idea it was a practical jokers. So this guy's dancing all crazy and having a great time. Like us. he goes, "Hey, you know, Joey, you got a, a business card in your pocket. Take it out, give it to the guy." And I'm listening to my ear, so I go over to him and say, hey, you got really sweet dance moves. Here's my business card, my number's there. Call me, text me later on, give me your number, you're gonna be my next video. Sweet. I start to walk away. As I walk away, I hear my ear go back. I'm like, oh no. There's a person standing next to that person. I go, hey, can I have the business card back? You have the sweetest dance moves. You're really, really good. I think you're fantastic. Here's my number. Sorry, I only have one business card. Here's my number, you can take that. I did that four times, and people's faces were so pissed. And I felt like, yeah, it was, hum yeah, it was the only time I was actually ever humiliated when I had to pee my pants in front of 50 people. Legit. And that is not easy. Try to do it. I dare you. People just staring at me, you going, <laughs> trying, and I literally, legitimately, yeah, I had to pee my pants. Oh my gosh. Most embarrassing moment of my life, pretty much. Love it. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. sharing. I did it um. for the jokers. <laughs> So I, this is just probably something that I want to hear more about because I'm a big Hot Ones fan. I like watching that series. Um, you were on twice. There's not, it's a short list of people who have been on the show twice. He was on very early on, by the way. This was like, if you go back and look at the early episodes of Hot Ones, like season one and two, it looks very different. It's like darker, it's like yeah. a cave. Um, it, was a, yeah, it was for Big Factory Wedding, I believe, too, was when yeah. I did it. And that's when he went to promote that. Um, and so if you've never seen the show, Hot Ones Online, streaming show, you can check it out on YouTube. It's basically an interview very similar to us, but there's a row of hot wings that gets progressively hotter as you go along while he's being interviewed and asked questions. You have to work through that towards the end. And I'm not joking, you do, your brain turns to crap. Like legit, you get almost like a high. I'm not exaggerating, when you I, get to I've done it. Yeah, when you I get that brought high. it and did it ourselves for a birthday. You get delirious. It was crazy. And the one, yeah, how. the one that's the worst is the bomb. Oh god, that's number I mean, eight. Anytime you ever watch the show, if you ever watch Hot Ones, number eight when they get to the bomb, people's faces completely change because everything's like a little hot. It's got a good zing, a little sweet, really hot, and this one just kicks you in the face. It's awful. So my friends give me crap because I did the whole thing, including the last dab, but I skipped 
the bomb. See, that's where you went wrong. I know. Well, because they said it tastes like chemicals in your mouth. It's like you nothing pleasurable it about it. You yeah, you so I, I technically didn't do it correctly, so I have to do it again now. They're selling it. Yeah, it burned. <laughs> Two days later. <laughs> what was, I know you drank you water. <laughs> you drank water, but you didn't touch the milk. Is there a reason why you didn't touch the milk? Well, because all of a sudden you were like, oh, well, I'm not going to touch it. No, I'm not going to touch it either. JC's like, I'm not going to touch it. I said, well, guess what? I'm not going to touch it either. That was a dumb idea. They did, he did it with sink again, like, on season yeah. 22. So, like, years later. Like, years, years, years later. Okay. Years later. And I was, uh, I was spitting on the floor. My mouth was salivating. Then they said, you know, somebody said the F word a lot of times. So I went, <laughs> the whole time. You were like, oh, well, you said it more than my, once. My favorite part was when everyone's having, like, you're going through it. Like, Justin's going through it, you're going through it, everybody's going through it. And they're like, my, my mouth's on fire, and all these things. And then JC's just like, I'm actually okay. And Chris Kerfrapt is like, shut up, JC. <laughs> that was my yeah, favorite. Because he was like, I'm going to be the cool one. I'm not going to let anybody know that it's going to bother me when I know deep down he was hurt. <laughs> he took some before that, too. He lied. <laughs> So yeah, I loved watching you on that. Again, I get to see like you get to see your personality, and it's just so fun. And um, you've been a lot of other things: Dancing with the Stars, Second Runner Up, uh, The Masked Singer. Um, I loved that too. That was the first season of The Masked Singer. See, I'm a bridesmaid, never bride. People, never one, no one's number two, number three, number four, whatever. <laughs> but I like being that way. People always say that well, you never won any competition because it's a competition. That's not my life. You know what I mean? The meeting, like what I'm doing those, in those areas, they're just fun. So I'm not like, oh my gosh, I need to win. Do it. You as the rabbit was pretty cool. cool. And it was me because it was the first season here in the States. Yep. So I watched, everybody watched it. That was really cool. We're trying to guess who it is. And I like how Jenny McCarthy at one point thought it was her husband. <laughs> who is. I got a phone call too. Like the, the first time I did the show, out of nowhere, I got a text message. Well, actually, nobody called me, left a message Johnny. He's like, hey, are you some rabbit on some show? So my wife's on a show that she's, she's, she's like judging or something like that. Are you a rabbit? I text her, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. And I'm not there. And then she noticed me again. She kept saying, she goes, your thighs, because I got big old legs. So she noticed my, my legs, honestly, and I was in a corset to suck everything in so you wouldn't notice except for my big ass legs. But yeah, I literally had a, a corset and a straight jacket on pretty much. Cool that rabbit. It was I like cool. the little tick. It was a fun costume, but man, it wasn't really that fun. They had locked, legitimately locked me in. Those locks were real. I'm like, can you just like Velcro it? Why would you lock it? So I'm like, I don't trust anybody. So in the pants, there were zippers, and I had a, I had a spare key in there, and they had a set of keys. So if anybody lost them, I had to go to the bathroom. I'm like, yo, I got a key unlocked quick. But it was, uh, it was, it was fun. So you guys show again your amazing vocals and I think everybody I remember people watching and going like that's a performer right there. Like you can always I mean it's easy to spot so I mean, someone who's comfortable on stage, who knows what they're doing, who's confident, their vocals, their dance moves. You were just like, Yeah, you've done this, you're a pro. You know, and it was easy to narrow it down. Well if you ever watch the show, the, the, the nice telltale sometimes is watch people's mannerisms. Yeah. They'll end up singing and doing their mannerism, whatever that is. So if you think it's that person, watch them on a video and you'll see their hands. The same thing, yeah. There's so many tells in there. So anyway, it was really cool. I really enjoyed watching that season. Um, and then we, we can go ahead and start lining up for questions. Yeah. I know we're getting questions. close to time. We, we started a little late, so we'll end a little late. It's okay. No worries. Um, and you can start lining up here. And then this last question I'm going to ask before I open it up to the audience is uh, just a little bit about Trolls. I've had that song, A Better Place, in my brain. Like when it came out, I loved it. And then because I knew I was going to be interviewing you, right. I just kind of put it on. And it has been like in my brain for like a week. And I, But I'm not mad at it. It's so fun. It's, it's a good song. song. It's I'm a just, good song. I'm happy that my daughters are older now that they don't have to listen to that 1,400 times. Like my kid would watch a movie and watch, want to watch it. So she wasn't, she's been past trolls a little bit now. She enjoyed it, but it's not like obsessive with kids. We you need know, to watch it. It's like, thank the Lord. I'm going to that song. I'm so happy. And I tried to find your troll. I didn't know if they were selling it. And I looked up here for it, and they didn't, I didn't have oh, it. Oh, troll? I wanted your troll. Yeah, well, to get it. somebody stole mine. We each got one. They're one of a kind. I had it in the theater, and it disappeared. So there's, no a, kidding. there's a Joey troll there's out there? There's a Joey troll out there with the red hair. He's got the little dead mouth and all the goatee and everything. Mattel made him, 
and somebody, and it wasn't me, lost it. I would love for them to send you like a ransom thing. Of, so, like, I know, some somebody, somebody, I'm about to say, somebody has it, somebody <laughs> has it. I have your troll. They're like, yeah. you want to see him live? Serenade me or the troll gets it or something. Troll like gets it. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to do some questions right now. Uh, oh, well, I, I, I'm sorry, I feel like I kind of cut that off, but was that a good experience being able to do that for the troll? Yeah, right? right. And have, a, you know, be a troll in Oh my God, it was fun. Seeing that, oh my God, we have to pick our own colors and stuff like that, name, everything. So we got to name our, our characters. It was cute. What was your character's name? A Blaze. A Blaze? I just like so Blaze was already taken from Sonic or something. They said, I was like, ah, oh, well, then I'll add an A. There you go. There you go. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, right. Go ahead and give your name, get up on that mic, and then say your name and your question, please. Uh, hi, my name is Megan, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm a huge NSYNC fan still, and I'm 39 years old. Then over there. <laughs> so my question for you is, uh, what is your, what was your favorite NSYNC album to record, and why? Ooh. I think, mm, that's a tough question. I think the first one, though, really. Because that's when we're still trying to find our sound, I think, and trying to find everything. Even though some of the songs are really weird, it was like the European album, which was Riddle, and some other wacky, stupid song, well, I Need Love was another one. Oh, awful songs. But it was, it, was, it was kind of, you know, it was our first album, so it was really kind of taking through stuff, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, because I had I Want You Back, and then all the original. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you so much for your question. Next, Bueller, Bueller. Maybe adjust her mic a little bit. Yeah. Just push them down. There you go. And if not, speak louder, I'll hear you. Yeah. Repeat it. Right? Fun. So actually, that was, I think, even before my big fat Greek wedding, I think we shot that. Lance. So it was one of our first films. Yeah, Lance was in love with a girl. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, that was the movie premise. That was stupid. Um, no, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun because, I mean, it was, it was just us being silly and friends. I mean, we had a really good time doing it. It was one of our first kind of singing our TV films, actually. It was really nice. Got to meet GQ and a couple of the, the cast members. Emmanuel Shrieky was, it was one of our first really kind of films before she started doing Entourage and doing all those other films, which was great. Um, but it was a great experience. It was, again, it was one of those things where the skies were the limit in a sense. We were like, wow, we can do a film. This is, this is great, you know? And Lance had this idea with the script and everything else. And we did it. It was supposed to be actually even more like a PG-13, actually, almost like a rated R on certain things, but they cut it down to make it nice and clean. And I think we could say, like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you it was so interesting. Much. Yeah, it's really interesting. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much for your question. Give your name and, and so your weird. question. They did scripts and they chop things up and stuff and darn it. How you doing? Hello. Uh, my name is Juanita. Uh, I'm really fan of yours. Um, only as you come to our lips, you weren't there because you were sick. Yes, it was in Texas somewhere, right? San Antonio. So I was so bummed, so I'm excited to see you here. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I had pneumonia. I was in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the only, I hope it was the only show I ever missed. Okay, sorry. Um, so all the places you visited, whether it be here or overseas, what was your favorite and why? My favorite? Tough one too. I mean, New York is my favorite just because it's my hometown. I love it. I've been there. I don't know. I feel at home. But the really coolest place I thought was really cool is when we first actually started and the first time we went to a BMG convention for the record company to show and introduce and sync. And that was in South Africa. We did two places. One was in Crete, in Greece, and then we did uh, Cape Town, South Africa. That was the first time I ever traveled like that far and seen penguins on a beach and I pet the cheetah and it was I was gonna die driving on these edges. These people like this thing. I don't know how crazy they, they were driving literally. It's like off a cliff almost. But it was beautiful. That was that was really cool. Thank you so much for your question. We got a Decepticon in the house. Yes. Your name? Oh yeah, I totally forgot to have that on. <laughs> Hi, Hi, so Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm a big fan Appreciate since you. like y'all's concert on Disney air back like in the the concert. The concert. I recorded it on VHS and I watched it a million times. Heck yeah. Thank you. Um, I also want to say thank you for coming to little cities like this and doing hey. this. Oh, is this your first time recording? Is this your 
first time here at Corpus Christi? Yeah, yeah, first time, yeah. I mean, I think I've been here back way back in the day, but being here again, yeah, it's been, it's been many, many moons since I've been to Corpus Christi again. So, so I, like I said, I'm a big fan, never had an opportunity to see and see, so the fact that you're here is like a dream country. Never thought I'd get to meet you, so this is awesome. Oh, um, but my question is, um, you know, you have a girl dad, I know you have a young daughter, 14, same age as my daughter. So I'm just curious to know like how she thinks about you being like part of one of the biggest boy bands in the world. The, the best for sure. But Dad's Dad's a dork. Dad's a dork. Dad is a dork. That's dad is, is yeah. Daddy daddy is not not cool unless they have perks. Oh, daddy can, you know, go to a premiere. Well, I want to go too, Dad. You know, it's that kind of thing. Other than that, I'm like, hey, you want to watch anything that Dad does? Uh, you want to watch the Trolls? We did, I just want to show you that. No, I'm good. That's not it's like that house you're living in. <laughs> like those clothes you're wearing. Watch that movie because that paid for your clothes. You <laughs> sinner. But it, it, it is kind of funny. But it's, it's funny because I have a 23 year old, and then my, but she's just turned 14, so it's it's. It's an interesting dynamic, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, she she thinks it's cool sometimes. She kind of laughs at it, but she never really got a taste of it until the first time she ever really saw it, my little one, is when we did the Star of the Walk of Fame. To see that magnitude of that many fans out there all standing there, she was just like, what is this? And we're like, well, this is, this is what we deal. do back in the day, this is what it was. So it's like, you know, and then my older one one time, before we did the, uh, Coachella with Ariana Grande. It was hilarious because I was like, she was 18, I guess, at the time last while ago. Holy cow. So I was like, hey, you want to go to Coachella with your old man? She's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm performing with Ariana. She goes, are you serious? Like, yep. So it's kind of funny. You know, it's weird because, you know, they, they, I never even, I, we never even knew anything about Coachella back in the day. I mean, obviously it started getting popular and it was completely different. Now it's changed, you know, from heavy rock now to everything. So it was fun. Awesome. Thank you. You love me, so my daughter still thinks I'm a dork. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, I like, are you guys doing it together? Are you going to do a question in unison? What's happening right now? I love it. Well, I have one and then she Oh, okay. Right. I like your instinct shirts. Give your Go name. for it. I like it. Hi, Joey. My name is Rena. This is my sister, Julissa. Um, one of our favorite unsafe music videos is Drive Myself Crazy. And it looked like a really fun music video to shoot. So can you talk a little bit about like the shooting process? It's funny you say that. Shit, that was specifically that one. Drive Myself Crazy. <laughs> God, I'm so politically not correct. Um, the idea before that, I'll get to that in a second, but the idea for that, and even now they're like, oh, you guys are like in the same asylum. It'd be crazy and all. You should, obviously, this would not fly now. But back in the day, I think we all kind of were like talking to pretty much those girls that we were all involved in. Chris was dating the girl Danielle, well, except for Lance. Uh, <laughs> everybody was kind of like, it was weird, but it was, like, it was a fun little thing. It was like, drive myself crazy. Think about that. Loving this woman, you drive yourself into an insane asylum. That was the idea. The dumb idea that I had that I wanted, and they thought it was a good idea. It's more of a weird idea. Yeah, give him a twist to it. It was basically us in large fat suits and singing to a piece of cake that was locked. <laughs> at a table and us singing, I drive myself crazy because I want to eat the cake. That was my dumb idea that really got shut down real quickly. But I still wanted to do it. I was weird out, you know, eat it. That's the thought I had. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have went very well, but whatever. But yeah, we, uh, you know, the, 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 the shoot was fun because we had a lot of our friends actually in the, in the, in the shots. Like, uh, friends of mine from high school. Yeah, some, our security guards in it actually. He's got bunny ears. One of our security guards has this big dude with bunny ears. We were just doing this crazy stuff, it was a lot of fun. It was, we shot that in LA, and actually, the, I think it's the, a lot of where the, the school scenes were shot, a lot of 80s, supposedly 80 movies, like in 1980 movies were shot there. You know, like, I think, like, not like 16 Candles, but stuff like that was all shot in those schools. Yeah. That's cool, right. thank you. Joel, what was your question? Oh, okay, we got time for one more, guys. Don't worry, we gotta we're, wrap it up. we're gonna have two more, because I'm gonna say it really quick, come. I know. <laughs> Favorite memory in sync was getting together. Next question. Oh, no, we're quick. quick. All right, real quick. Cold Spr time. Yeah. Greenpoint, Brooklyn, best fried chicken at two in the morning. Hell yeah. Uh, so Comic Cons are for fan girls, fan boys. You know, in your career and everybody you got to meet, is there just one that you like lost to your mind? But like, I can't believe. I was speechless. With a Christopher Reeves. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. man. Christopher he came. He, this is after his accident too. He came with him and his wife and his kid. Oddly enough, I'll tell you in two seconds. 
he came there, saw the show, wanted to know about choreography stuff, and this, he was in the chair, and I was like saying, I had this Superman charm and everything, I just sat there, everybody just looked at me, I'm like, what? I said, I'm enjoying this, that's the freaking man right there, I'm like, come on. Fast forward years later, I'm doing something in Miami with DJ Khaled for some taco tasting thing for uh, Good Morning America. And I'm looking at this kid, and I've never met him, but he's a, he's, a, he's a guy that does the interviews. He's like, hey, he goes, you know, I met you when I was with my dad. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I'm looking at him like, holy shit, your dad's Christopher Reeves. <laughs> like, it, it, it didn't dawn on me. His son actually does a whole bunch of interviews for Good Morning America. Wow. His son did. So it was really cool, though. I was just like, he's like, yeah, my dad talked very highly of you guys. And, me, you know, I was, was, was always a big instinct. I was like, that's really cool, man. I was like, and the cool thing was, is he gave me a signed autograph. He obviously wasn't able to sign it, but his wife signed it because she was legalized to sign it. And it said, from one Superman to another. Oh my Chris God. Reeves. So I was like, that's I awesome. legitimately have that. I'm not kidding you. I think it's on the side of my bed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I would love to continue talking to Joey all day. Shaking babies and kissing people or something like yes, that. I heart Joey. Y'all want to just scream? I love I heart Joey to tell real quick. Ready? One, two, three. I heart Joey to tell. Oh, you stop it now, people. <laughs> Thank you guys so much.